it's Mixing Gamer here, and if you watched my channel long enough, you already know the drill. 4.8 Spiral Abyss. I come, I see, I conquer. Let's just get this over with.
blowing up the place. Supporting fire.
it for this spiral bis run so i wanted to challenge myself for a bit as you noticed i didn't use nouvellette so i wanted to test out emily um with some weird comps so why not do it now with the spiral bis so i slapped on weird four stars on emily and well that team literally blitzed through the abyss I didn't even need to use Nouvellet. So, yeah. And as for second half, well, I wanted to bring back Navia again. So, we brought back Navia. So, basically, this is just uh, me dusting off a lot of characters that I don't use. And also to test out Emily in the long run. Um, that was basically my Spiral Abyss run in a nutshell. So, yeah. Well, um, it's time to discuss about the uh, Spiral Abyss. And if you heard correctly, yes, discuss about it. Which means that... Sadly, I will never do the commentary videos ever again. And that's because Imaginarium Theater exists. So, yeah. Um, so basically, um, now the schedule for uh, Genshin is just Spiral Abyss, then Imaginarium Theater, then Spiral Abyss and Imaginarium Theater. You get the drill. So basically, it's just two endgame content instead of me waiting for reset to just do uh, Spiral Abyss content. But... Yeah, so um, I'm just going to be moving the uh, commentary section to the actual spiral of this video. So without any further ado, it's time for me to teach you how to beat these floors. So yeah, as for chamber one, first half um, and second half, these are just mob fights and it is a monolith floor, which means that uh, you should be running animal uh, characters or crowd controllers. So Venti, Kazuha, 
anyone who can crowd control, you should be fine. Um, if you want to run a cheat code, you can use Nahida. Nahida is a great option, uh, mainly because you have a 75% dendro damage bonus as a leyline disorder, which means that you're going to be doing a bajillion damage if you use Nahida. Um, you can also use Kale. You can use anyone who is a dendro nuker, and this floor is wiped out. It is clean. So, yeah. Um, the only trouble I would say that will, these enemies will probably give you is the Ruin Destroyer with its underground attack where it shoots a laser on the ground. Y you know what I mean, if you fought these things before. And the Pyro Slimes where they jump in the air. So that's basically it. Um, as for the others, they do a lot of damage to the Monolith, but if you do have good characters, you can kill them pretty quickly. So uh, Chamber 1 shouldn't be a problem if you have really uh, good built characters. As for Chamber 2, um, the first half is the Aramite and then the Samurai and as well as the normal Samurai. Um, the only trouble that the Aramite will probably give you is a bunch of pyro damage. Um, but other than that, you just kill its um, persona and then it basically gets stunned and you can kill him. Or you could kill her before she summons the persona. That works too. <laughs> um, you can also, um, as for the Samurai, you gotta kill them both at the same time. If you don't, then they heal each other. Yep. So you don't want that to happen. So you don't want the other one to heal itself. So basically just kill them both. Um, as for the second half, the only problems that you'll ever face is the Pyro Fatui agent because he loves to go invisible or the Stonehide Law Churl. Um, there is one answer to this chamber and one answer alone. Crowd controller. Yeah, you're gonna be tired of me hearing that or you're gonna be tired to hear this from me. But crowd controller, crowd controller, crowd controller. Um, these uh, floors are meant to be used by crowd controllers. So Venti, Kazaha, Sucrose, etc. They literally wipe out everyone if you build them, obviously. But um, if you are just going to be killing them one at a time, then I would say the Stonehide Law Troll is probably the biggest threat um, besides the uh, Pyro Fatui agent because he loves to tackle. He has a shield up, so you have to destroy the shield if you want to do um, your max damage. And he also loves to jump. So yeah, th that's fun, right? <laughs> so um, my advice for you here is to bring your best team. Um, because if you do, then this should be no problem. So yeah. As for Chamber 3, um, for first half, it's the Mirror Maiden and then the Vishap Hashlings. Um, Mirror Maiden is obviously your biggest threat because she loves to teleport a lot. Luckily though, there's only one. Yeah, there's only one Mirror Maiden you have to worry about. Once she's gone, it is easy sailings from there. As for second half, you have the Ruin Drake and then the big fish hop. Um, this is pretty easy because they're big body characters. So that means that you can run characters who are specialized in taking out one enemy, like Emily. So yeah, you can just run um, your DPS team on the second half to take out bosses. Um, so yeah. Um, Crowd controllers aren't really that good here, unless it is the first half, because there's actually three Vishap ha Hatchlings that um, spawn in the first half. But other than that, um, just bring your best team, honestly. You can bring, uh, well, you can bring the Arlen Kino team. You can bring Nouvellet. Uh, basically, anything that could destroy these floors, uh, you will be fine. So, yeah. Floor 11 is just your typical floor 11. I still have to discuss about it, though, because it is a new floor. Um, unlike floor um, 9 and 10. So, yeah. As for floor 12, this is the uh, hard floor of the Abyss. It always has been. Um, it is the endgame content for Genshin. Well, at least it used to be until Imaginarium Theater came out. But uh, regardless, uh, let's talk about it. So in Chamber 1, you have the Mechanical Array, which is the first half boss. This thing is your typical mechanical array boss. If you fought this thing before, then you know how he works. If you guys don't know how he works, well, you have to get him at a certain amount of HP or you have to get him in a certain amount of time. So basically, it's either you get him to around 40% HP first or you waste enough time um, for him to do his desperation move. But once you do that, he splits into four parts. You have to defeat the part that is glowing, aka the ones with the sigils on it. Um, defeat that, get stunned, and then you kill it. That's literally it. That's a mechanical array. If you fought this thing in Inazuma before, then you probably know what to do here. So all I've got to say is bring your best team. As for second half, 
you have the Hydro Tulpa. I think this is the first appearance of this thing. Um, if I'm wrong, then the second appearance. Because I kind of remember him being um, in uh, the 4.0 or the uh, version 4 Spiral Abyss. I'm pretty sure. Um, because I did use Navia against this thing before. So yeah. Um, but uh, I will assume that this is the second time he appeared. But um, as for Hydro Tulpa, um, the main uh, advice that I'll give you is to burst him down as fast as you can. Um, if it does spawn his, um, if he does spawn his little tulpas, aka those miniature versions of him, kill them as soon as possible because he does get buffs from them. You don't want him to do a bajillion damage, right? So just kill them as fast as possible. Um, as for the tainted water spouting phantasm, he's literally there to waste your time because he's literally, it's literally only two enemies. The water spouting phantasm, which you defeat, and then once you defeat that, it's the hydro tulpa. So basically, you want to kill that phantasm as fast as possible, aka bring a pyro character, and then you go straight to Hydro Tulpa. So I guess the hardest part about this floor is the first chamber, because you literally fight two bosses. As for chamber two and three, well, I will uh, skip ahead. You don't fight two bosses at the same time. So yeah, as for chamber one, bring your best teams. That's all I'm going to say. As for uh, first half on Chamber 2, you got Ruin Graders, Thunder, uh, Craven, Rift Hounds, and then you got the Construction uh, Specialist Mech. Um, so these things you probably already fought before, especially since they appear all the time in Abyss. Um, for Ruin Graders, they're just big robots, literally just kill them off. Um, the Thunder, Craven, Rift Hounds, they're literally just Rift Hounds, you just kill them off. Um, the only problem they uh, pose is the corrosion effect. So make sure you bring a healer to deal with it. Um, as for the specialist mech, they love to spam their ice attacks and they love to spin around. So you want to kill them as fast as you can or else they will affect you by cryo and then you move slow. So yeah, that, that, that's not a, a good thing. As for the second half, they brought back the, uh, the veteran um, arithmetic enhancer mech, aka the boss... Um, uh, in the local legend of Fontaine. So, um, if you haven't fought this local legend in Fontaine before, he literally has a mechanic where, um, he has a shield. He grants a special field effect that lets you jump in the air and plunge attack. That's how you normally want to beat him. But, this is Sparrow Abyss. So, basically, you want to kill this shield as fast as you can. You don't have time to jump and then do a plunging attack. Unless you are using a plunging team like Ga Ming or Zhao, then yeah, you could go ahead and do that. But um, as for like normally, you want to bring Geo characters to kill that shield or Claymore characters to kill that shield. That is the only reason why I brought the Navia team in Chamber 2. I brought the Navia team to, to specifically, specifically kill this thing really fast um that's the only reason i would bring it if it wasn't for that reason i would probably bring something else but um as for well the second half of chamber two this thing loves to use geo shields a lot and it loves to put them up a lot um as soon as uh it gets a chance to so you basically want to kill the shield do as much damage as you can and then once it puts the shield back on you rinse and repeat until it dies that's basically it for uh the second half and that is my advice. Just bring a Geo character, honestly. Um, if you don't have a Geo character, then just bring uh, a Claymore character. That works too. Um, I mean, Ga Ming. Ga Ming is pretty cool, right? He's a four star and he's free. So uh, yeah, uh, if you don't have um, a Geo character to use, just use Ga Ming. Um, he's pretty good on the second half. As for Chamber 3, um, Chamber 3 um, has the hardest mob fight um, in this floor. Uh, because you have a bajillion Aramites, you got mechs, you got samurai, you got uh, another mech right there. So um, basically, the only threats that I would say are like the big threats are, of course, these two. Because remember what they do. One has the pyro machine gun, if you guys remember. The other has the hydro spinning bird kick. Yeah, so basically... Um, you don't want to get hit by those, especially the uh, water spinning kick. You don't want to get hit by that because you get in hit stun. So you want to kill those things as fast as you can or dodge them. Um, as for the final um, set of enemies, of course, um, these three are just fodder anyway. You could just kill them off easily. As for the final set, the Aramites, of course. So for the Aramites, 
they are a beast on their own right. Um, I would say I recommend you just kill their personas before you kill them first. So basically just wait a while until they summon their personas because it'll be 10 times easier to kill them instead of just rushing through and killing them while their personas are up. So yeah, all I'm gonna say is just try to complete this thing as fast as you can so you can get to the second half very fast because the second half is pretty annoying. Again, this is the uh, one of the reasons why I brought the Navia team. It's because of this golem. This golem, um, if you guys haven't fought this thing before in Fontaine, is a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. So what he does is he puts up a shield, of course, at the beginning, because why not? Um, he has mechanics where he strikes you down a lot. You want to dodge those, of course. Um, once you kill its shield, though, he gets stunned for a very, and I mean very long time. So exploit the ever-living crap out of it. Bring a Claymore, bring a Geo character. I don't care how you do it. Just exploit its mechanics and you should be fine. Like seriously. Even though I missed a ton of crits with Navia um, in Chamber 3, I still defeated him because I exploited his main gimmick of him getting stunned when he loses his shield. So yeah. So as for 412, it's not as bad as the previous version. Yeah, I will say that. Wanna know why? It's because, well, well, honestly, mainly because of Emily, but because there's not really that much to worry about because for, well, I will just summarize it again. For Mechanical Array, you just bring your best character. For Hydro Topo, you just bring a good Pyro character. Hu Tao, Arlequino, Gaming. Yeah, you have plenty of options. Uh, here, you can just bring a crowd controller or you can just bring your best character or Nahida. Nahida is a literal cheat code. Second half, you just bring a Claymore or a Geo. Chamber 3, you literally just bring crowd controllers or Nahida again for cheat code. Um, or you could just bring uh, the uh, other uh, best teams as well, uh, like Nouvellet. Nouvellet works really well here. And of course, for the Golem, bring Claymore and Geo characters. So that's basically it. So yeah, that's basically, um, that's all there is to say about uh, Floor 11 and 12. And that's my advice for you guys right there on how to beat them. So now, of course, um, you guys know the drill if you have been here before. If you don't, then, well, welcome to the uh, segment where I talk about my character builds. Yep, I showcase my builds um, so you guys could copy them um, just in case you want to beat this abyss. So without any further ado, let's talk about these characters. So first off is our girl... Um, the fourth of the Fatui Harbingers? Yeah, I got it correct. Um, is the Knave, aka Arlenkino, aka Paraware, or Perry. Um, so, uh, for my Arlenkino build, um, it still hasn't changed, really. Uh, 64% crit rate, 250 crit damage, um, no ER, of course. Has 2,000 attack because, well, it's Arlenkino. She scales off of attack. Pyro damage, of course. As for a weapon, I have Crimson Moon Semblance, obviously her best pole arm. Um, no other pole arm that you want to run um, besides this one. This one is extremely good. And besides, it has a cool weapon skin. So, yeah. As for her other best weapon, Staff of Homa. Yeah, no surprises there. It's the one of the best pole arms in the game. Um, if you don't have Staff of Homa, then you can just run other pole arms to work with. Um, but uh, mainly, you just want to give her a crit rate, crit damage pole arm and you should be fine. As for artifact set, I have four piece gladiators. Yes, I'm still grinding for her other set, but thankfully in 5.0, um, I don't have to worry about that anymore because you have artifact selectors now. So that means that Arlen Kino will basically have a new build sooner than you think. But as for, uh, well, this is her second best set, obviously gladiators, because it literally gives her um, normal attack damage, 35% increase for free. Unconditional. The only condition that you get is sword, claymore, and pole arm. And guess what? Arlen Kino is a pole arm character. So yeah, this set is really, really good on her. You already saw the damage she's able to do on the burning team. So yeah, pretty busted. As for constellations, I have her at C1. Her C1 just makes her go into better um, teams, and she's not uh, Zhongli locked. And that's because, as you see here. You get interruption resistance on Arlen Kino, which is pretty nice. Um, as for the future, though, I am probably going to get a C2 Arlen Kino because look at that damage. 
Yeah, and also, you get a physical and elemental res of 20%, which is pretty nice because it also combos with, well, this, which also gives you 20% res. So, yeah, um, really good constellation um, I should get um, as soon as, well, Arlequino gets her rerun, which is probably going to be very soon. But as for talents right here, 10, of course, because this is her main level up stat. Um, it's the thing that she uses. It's her main bread and butter. 6-6. Six, six. Um, if you want to know the reason why I mainly built these. One, elemental skill is only there for you to get your uh, normal attack stacks and your bond of life stacks. Two, um, for Bail Moon Rising, it literally is just a big AoE burst. And it's only reason there is to heal you. Unless, of course, you're C6. Then, yes, level up burst. <laughs> but um, as for... Uh, e and Q, I didn't level those up because all of her damage is on her normal attacks. So yeah. Um, and that is it for my Arlen Kino build. It's pretty simple, really. Um, even though she does have a secondary uh, set on gladiators, um, she performs really well. And besides, you pro you guys probably already have gladiators anyway. It's a pretty common set, especially if you are grinding bosses. Um, because gl bosses love to drop Wanderers trope and... Uh, Gladiator's finale, so it's basically free to build Arlen Kino. So yeah. Secondly, we have the new character in our roster, um, and also the uh, first character to showcase here um, that is new in the Spiral Abyss series, and that is Emily. So um, Emily, uh, I built her, and she is so good. Is she is extremely good. And you probably already saw her power in the Abyss. She's just way too busted. And she's gonna get better when Natlin uh, comes out anyway. So, as you see here, crit rate crit damage is extremely broken. Uh, as you see there. High crit rate. High crit damage. Her ER, she doesn't need ER because, I mean, you literally saw it in the Abyss. She constantly gets her um, burst back. Um, mainly because of, uh, well, she has, as uh, I will just show it here. She has a 50 energy cost burst. Yeah, she doesn't need energy. <laughs> um, well, besides that, I also gave her Dendro damage bonus because, of course, she is a Dendro sub DPS. Um, obviously, give it to her. And also, I have 2000 attack on her, meaning that she's able to give uh, damage buffs thanks to her passive. Um, so, yeah, pretty nice. As for weapon, of course, I gave her her best weapon, Lumi Dose Elegy. Sadly, this is, uh, I think the only weapon you could probably run on her, um, besides another crit rate crit damage weapon, like Staff of Homa, maybe. Um, but, uh, this is the, her best weapon, of course, because it literally gives you dungeon damage bonus on burning. Yeah, pretty good. And also, she gets energy back as well. This is literally her best weapon. As for artifact set, Unfinished, uh, Reverie is, of course, her best set, too. It's literally made for her because it boosts, uh, it boosts damage if the opponent is burning. There's nothing to say there. As for constellations, I have her at C0. She's the type who doesn't need constellations to be good. Because she's already good to begin with. Um, but her constellations do give her a couple extra uh, goodies. If you do really want that. Because you get a... Uh, well, here you get increased damage by 20%. Um, for here you get an additional scent. So basically you get more scents on your um, E and Q, which is pretty nice. So yeah. Um, so if you guys want her constellations, you can go for them, but she doesn't really need constellations to be good. As for talents, I have six, 10, nine. Um, I'm still trying to level this up to level 10. Once I do though, well, you guys know what's coming next, the Emily showcase video. Um, but as for now, yeah, I I'm, I'm out. I I'm out of mats. <laughs> so yeah, this is what you have to deal with. But um, as you saw in the Spiral Abyss, she performed really well anyway. 6, 10, 9. That's basically it. So there is Emily, uh, pretty busted in general. 100% uptime on sh on Lantern, by the way. Yeah, if you guys didn't know. So, yeah. Um, next up in the Burning Team, we have a guy who is making a grand return to the Spiral Abyss series. Toma! Yeah, I haven't used him in a while, um, which is uh, surprising. Um, as you see here, he has 30,000 HP, which means that he's able to perform basically fine enough. Um, he has ER of 197, which is more than enough to get his burst back um, pretty, pretty consistently. So yeah. 
As for weapon, I have R5 Favonius Lance at level 60. Yeah, level 60. A level 60 Favonius Lance, and he performs fine in the Abyss. Yeah, he doesn't really need that much help to be built anyway. All he needs is HP and ER, and he's good to go. So, yeah. Um, you can literally give her, give him a HP% percent Lance, or HP% percent Pull Arm, or a Energy Recharge Pull Arm. Either way, he's gonna be performing fine. As for Artifact Set, this is, funny enough, his best set. Two-piece HP, two-piece Emblem. Yeah. So, Millilith Emblem. So, the reason why... Is because, well, you can do double HP if you want to increase his shield strength. Or, you can do a balance of both and give HP and ER. Because the only thing that matters for Toma is HP. There's no other stat uh, matters that much besides ER. Um, that uh, boosts everything else. So, HP, HP is the way to go. As for constellations, I have him at C6. Of course I have him at C6. I mean, he literally released in 2.0. Yeah, it's been three years. Of course, I'm, I would have a maxed out by then. But, um, yeah, uh, Toma, C6. Pretty easy to get C6, honestly, if you are a day one player. So, yeah. As for talents, 699. Yeah, these are boosted by constellations, by the way. Um, which means that the true level up is 666. Yeah, minimally built. Performed really well. Toma is really good. Um, people sleep on him. But that's basically it for Toma. Um, still the goaded uh pyro support of all time um and he performs really well to this very day too thanks to a certain knave so yeah um as for the final member of the burning team i decided to bring one of the worst characters in the game into this uh abyss dory yes um if you guys remembered i actually used dory in my abyss um, thing. So yeah, this isn't the first time you saw her um, if you guys are old viewers of the channel um, But as for you new guys, you probably don't know. I don't uh, you probably don't know, but I actually like Dory <laughs> so I um, I try to use her as much as I can uh, And this was a perfect chance to showcase her. So yeah as for Dory's build. Yeah, she's insane You could tell I actually worked on her so 30,000 HP 256% energy recharge. Yeah. Um, that's overkill, right? Yep. Weapon. Favonius Greatsword. Not even fully leveled up, by the way. Level 70 R5. Yep. <laughs> She's not fully built. And she performs well. And as for artifact set, no bleas. This is her best set. Obviously, it's her best set. She uses her burst to heal people. Um, so why not use that to buff all party members? So yeah. Um, she's literally just like miniature Electro Bennett, I guess. If you do give her an Oblis. But um, her main gimmick behind her burst is that if you uh, want to do Electro Damage and heal at the same time, you want to be close to your opponent. So um, might as well just get an extra attack boost on top of that. So that's why I gave her a Oblis. And funnily enough, it's her best set because she's a support. As for constellations, I have her at C4. Um, she doesn't really need C6 unless you really value um, the uh, well the electro infusion on your lamp. So yeah, um, and also uh, value uh, HP on healing if you do do normals. But other than that, C4 just makes her really good. Because she gets energy recharge, she gets healing. Basically everything, um, everything helps her, basically. So yeah. Um, that's all I gotta say for constellations. They are kind of mid though. Um, I'm not gonna lie. But, uh, Dory is Dory. That that's all I'm gonna say. Um, her kit works because it's weird. As for talent, 669. Again, boosted by constellations. So 666. She's fully, well, not fully, but minimally built, um, and she performs fine, so yeah. So there's Dory. Um, I guess I only mainly used her for reaction damage, but then again, it, it's extremely high reaction damage, so yeah. And there is the burning team. So now it's time to talk about, well, um, a team that you probably saw if you are old viewers of the channel, the Navia team. So let's just go over that. So, first off is, of course, the star of the show, Navia. 
um, the president of the Spina di, Lur di Rosula. So, as you see here, high attack, crit rate, crit damage is high, um, GL damage is high. Yeah, you get the drill. She's a main DPS. As for weapon, I have the Verdict. This is definitely her best weapon. Um, as for her other uh, weapons that you can run, you can run Serpent Spine, of course. You can run the new Claymore, the Talking Stick. That also works too. So, yeah. Um, basically, the uh, main thing I want to say is just give her a crit rate, crit damage um, Claymore. And she performs fine. As for Artifact Set, Nighttime Whispers in the Echoing Woods is her best set. It's obviously made for her because it gives her... Uh, elemental skill GL damage bonus and also when you have the crystallized uh, reaction which is her way to get bullet stacks she gets 150% increase yeah this is literally her best set as for constellations I have read C0 she's also the type of character who doesn't need constellations which is a good thing um, because all of her damage is tied to her elemental skill everything else here just um, basically helps her uh, get her elemental skill faster and also helps with her burst um, which is basically really good. Also, her C6 just makes her busted. So, yeah. But, um, again, I will say it. Navia doesn't need constellations to be good because she's already good enough. As for talents, I have 9, 10, 6. Yes, I'm still trying to level this up. But I have priorities right now, and that is Emily. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but that's basically it for Navia. Um, I only leveled this up to level 10 because she uses this as her bread and butter. Same with this, because once you use your elemental skill, you get GL damage bonus on your normals. So, um, yeah, that's also the reason why I leveled this up, um, as high as it could. So, yeah. There is Navia, still one of the best GL characters in the game, if not, uh, the best GL character in the game. She, al she also is, without a doubt, the best GL DPS in the game. She's uh, the best GL DPS in the game. But she doesn't even need G or she doesn't even need GL characters. So yeah. <laughs> um, next up is of course the best uh, GL character in the game, um, undoubtedly uh, besides Navia, of course, is Zhongli, aka the best shielder in the game. So Zhongli, obviously, um, you gotta build them with max HP, and that's what I did, fifty thousand HP. Um, I did the weird route. And I made him a sub DPS. Yeah, so I made him a sub DPS support hybrid. And that's because his meteor actually does good damage. So um, that's the reason why he's like that. He has crit or crit damage. But all of his uh, skills are HP percent. Um, or all of his um, artifacts are based around his HP. So yeah. As for weapon, I have Black Tassel. This is his best weapon. Yeah, I'm not joking. Um, because it literally gives him max HP. That's literally it. A three-star weapon is his best weapon. Yeah, let that sink in. As for artifact set, I have Tenacity of the Millet. This is obviously his best set. If you are protected by a shield, you get increased uh, damage for all party members. Enough said. As for constellations, I'm at C0. He's also another character who doesn't need constellations to be good. And besides, um, the only constellations to get is, I guess... C6. Sure. Yeah. Um, but it is still, he doesn't need constellations because his shield already is good enough because Hoyo decided to buff him to Oblivion in 1.1. 1. Uh, 1. So, yeah. As for talent, 6, 10, 6. Of course, I love this up to level 10. It is his main bread and butter. So, yeah. Um, so there is Zhang Li. There's my Zhang Li build. Uh, best shielder in the game, of course. And next up, we have two members of the big three. If you guys don't know what the big three is, it's Xing Cho, uh, Bennett, Zhongling. So yeah, um, which make the national team, of course. But um, here is one of them, and that is Zhongling. So uh, Zhongling is still the best Pyro uh, sub DPS in the entire game. Um, but that's probably about to change once Natling comes out with the Pyro Archon. So, uh, well, she can enjoy her throne ball. she can until 5.3. <laughs> so yeah, but... Um, as you see here, crit rate, crit damage is pretty standard. ER is high. Pyro damage is uh, high too. So she's just your typical main sub DPS. As for her weapon, the catch. Yep, her best weapon. <laughs> you literally get this by fishing. You literally fish and you get the best weapon for Zhongling. Yeah, it's pretty easy to get. Do it if you uh, don't have the catch. 
As for artifact set, since she is a sub DPS that uses burst, obviously her best artifact set is Emblem of Severed Fate. This is the one of the best artifact sets in the game. Um, because it literally gives you elemental burst damage based off of your energy recharge. Yeah, pretty busted. As for constellations, I have her at C6. She's literally a day one character, so you probably have her C6 at this point. If not, then I rec I strongly recommend you get her C6 because pyro damage bonus. That's all I'm gonna say. As for talents, we have six, nine, eleven. So um, this is down by two levels. I am planning to, to level this up to level thirteen. Um, but again, uh, I, I don't have mats. I, I'm prioritizing uh Emily. So yeah, but there is Xiang Ling, um, still the best power sub DPS in the game for now, at least. So yeah. And next up, last but not least, is your boy Bennett, a uh, Boken no Boken. So uh, Bennett, uh, well, he's pretty easy to build. He's actually one of the easiest characters to build in the game. You literally give him HP and ER. Guess who else needs HP and ER? Toma, Dory. Yeah, the support characters are pretty easy to build in this game, so yeah. But, I see here, HP, ER, um, your basic Bennett, really. As for his best weapon, Skyward Blade. Yeah, this is a banner weapon. If you guys don't have Skyward Blade, then you can run Festering Desire if you are a 1.2 player. If you're not a 1.2 player, then you can run Favonius Sword or Sack Sword. Basically, anything that gives you ER works for Bennett. So yeah, just give him an ER sword and he should be fine. As for artifacts, I have Noblesse, um, Oblige, which is, of course, his uh, best 4P set. His burst literally gives you attack buff. So why not stack that attack buff with another attack buff? Yep. That's his, that's the reason why this is the best set in the game. As for Constellation, I have him at C6. People might argue that you shouldn't, argue, um, get him at C6. But I did it because of two characters. Arlen Kino and Ga Ming. They are the two characters that use this to its maximum advantage. And I use Bennett a lot on Arlen Kino team. So yeah, this is a no-brainer. I had to get her get him C6. So yeah, Bennett is at C6 mainly because Arlen Kino and Ga Ming exist. And besides, um, it doesn't nerf Navia's damage potential that much because, um, well, a lot of modern characters nowadays just have um, infusion that can't get interrupted. Um, the only character in the game that has infusion that can be interrupted is Kuching. Yeah, Kuching. But Kuching's best team isn't in Pyro teams. Her best teams are in Electro teams and Dendro teams. So yeah, Quicken. Literally, that's her best team. And Quicken doesn't use Pyro, so yeah. And as for talents, I have 6, 9, 13. Of course, I love this up to level max because this is his main bread and butter. So yeah. And that's basically it for um, every character um, that I played in uh, Floor 12. And that is the end of the video. So yeah. Well, if you guys enjoyed this Spiral Abyss run and if you love my ramblings and uh, my builds... Um, and if you want to support the channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe uh, down below. It really means a lot to me if you do like and subscribe. Uh, it helps me keep me motivated to make more videos. Um, without you guys, I wouldn't be here. So again, if you do like and subscribe, thank you so much for supporting the channel. It really does mean a lot to me. And as for the comments, well, since this is a pretty new Spiral Abyss, what do you guys think? You think it's easy? You think it's hard? Um... What teams did you guys use in the Spiral Abyss? I am really curious to know because I did use a wonky team. So um, maybe you guys used wonky teams. So let me know um, what you used in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching this Genshin Spiral Abyss video. And I'll see you guys in the next gotcha video.